we established the baseline and then we've given some advice on tracking your food or at least be aware of what you're eating and not lying to yourself. Yeah. And then I guess next we can go to <clears throat> what are the common mistakes with the general public that they do <clears throat> with their food? Because some people might tick those boxes already. They, you know, they have a baseline, they know the goal. It could be losing weight or, I mean, for some people it could be gaining muscle, but let's let's focus on losing weight. And then they track their food and are fairly aware of what they're eating. What are some of the things they need to look out for within their food diary that could be, let's call it red markers or red flags, that they're doing mistakes there generally? Yeah, I think, well, the easiest way to think about a food diary as well, and um, it's just, you know, you look at the total calories that you've taken in across the week. If the scale on Monday hasn't shifted from the scale on Friday, then probably the total calories you've eaten in the week, if you've been truthful with it, are too much. Mm. If they've stayed roughly the same, you know you're probably in a isocaloric sort of state. And if it's going down, you're probably on target with the amount of calories you're doing. So I think that's like forget all the fads, forget all the diets. I mean, pretty much like you have – it comes down to calories in, calories out. Like and. Mm you can discuss this to your blue in the face with people and they'll say, no, it's not. And there's differences and it's like, well, no, it's not. It, it's an energy balance. Yep. Like it does come down to an energy balance. You can manipulate that balance. Um, and you can have, <clears throat> no, you can't have better. I know what you're saying, but what people might be thinking now is, oh, but some calories are better than others. You can have a <clears throat> eat healthier food or worse food, but the calories are still calories can be the, the same, same, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you. I remember hearing about um, what was it? The super size me. Yes. Uh, with yeah. McDonald's, and obviously he was in a massive calorie surplus. So yeah. Very unhealthy food. <laughs> he and, ate you a know, lot. His liver exploded and whatnot. And he was very unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. But then I did hear about another doctor who did a McDonald's soup, like um, mini mini size me or something like mm. that, and he ate uh, a diet which was in a calorie deficit purely of mcdonald's and lost weight mm. now again losing weight doesn't necessarily confer being healthy, healthy and that's a good point for listeners to sort of get on top of is just because you lose weight doesn't mean you're healthy like i mean the nutrient status of that food was probably appalling yet what it proved was it doesn't matter what food you eat if you're in a deficit you can still lose weight mm. Um, <clears throat> so I think then you go like, okay, what are the mistakes you look at? Look at the quality of the food that you're eating. Start going through. You can, if you use the, like I usually recommend pay for the pro version of um, my fitness power initially, because what it does is rank the foods that are highest in protein, carbohydrates, sugar, fiber, fat, so on. And you can look at the list and I say, go through the top 10, mm. have a look at them and see which foods there have barcodes. Okay. And so, like, if you look at your carbohydrates and look at that and go, wow, I ate, you know, bagels, white bread, pasta, um, I don't know. Burgers, pizza. Twinkies, pizza, <laughs> burgers. And that's all in your top 10. Then you start looking at the quality of the food you're consuming. Whereas if, like, everything in your top 10 carbohydrates pretty much came from the ground, so you had, you know, uh, baby spinach, you had some rocket, you had kale, you had collards, you had carrots, potatoes, sweet potatoes. Um, I don't know what else comes from the ground, <laughs> whatever else. <clears throat> Tomatoes, celery, cucumbers. And that's your top 10. Okay, you're, you're starting to win because mm. the density and the quality of those foods is going to be so much better. Um, you know, the, the density of calories, A, is a lot lower. You're not going to get half as many carbohydrates per gram, uh, per kilo of food versus, you know, processed carbohydrates, which are going to give you a lot of carbohydrates in a small amount of food. Mm. So you're probably going to feel a lot fuller whilst getting better quality nutrition um, at the same time. Same with, you know, do that with all the top 10 foods that you eat. Same with your proteins. Where's your protein coming from? Is it is it good quality protein? Is it lean sources of protein? Is it, you know, white fish? Is there some oily fish? Are there small oily fish? How many times are you eating red meat? I don't have a problem with red meat. I think mm. red meat can be eaten, you know, a couple of times a week, maybe more if you're a female and you, um, you know, you have an iron deficiency, B12 deficiency, things like that. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, looking looking at, the quality of your food is probably one thing I would say that is a common mistake with people. You can be, you know, if you're a vegetarian, you're a vegan, 
you can still be very, very unhealthy. I mean, you yep. can eat bread, you can eat pasta, you can eat, you know, all the things that are, you know, not necessarily healthy yet still vegetarian or vegan. Yeah, so. I did that for five yeah. years. What's that, vegetarian? Uh, yeah, it? I was vegetarian for five years and I basically just toast. <laughs> <laughs> it's not healthy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <clears throat>